Well, my name is Ashley. I'm a 36 year old mom of three. Um, I work full time for uh, the government and then I also uh, do photography on the side and I go to university. I'm taking an arts degree in sociology. I think that I always kind of had this sense that I maybe did have ADHD, like I was aware of it, um, but it's not something that anybody ever said, hey, I think you should get diagnosed or maybe get checked for this. Um, it wasn't until I started university and I actually thought I maybe had a learning disability because I was having a really hard time reading textbooks, writing papers, just studying in general. And it didn't seem to be that I didn't have the habits or skills necessary. I just wasn't able to do it. Um, and it was really discouraging. Um, I initially went to my doctor and I was diagnosed with anxiety and it wasn't a super great experience the doctor basically told me to do less things uh, and come back in six months they thought I was just taking on too many things um, and at that point I didn't really have the confidence to advocate for myself like I knew that I couldn't do less things it's like if I took something off of my plate I'm just going to fill it with something else because I can't sit still so it's not that that anxiety was there just as an anxiety disorder. I think it was coming from everything else. So I left that appointment really discouraged. Um, and it took me almost a year to go back and get that diagnosis. I went through um, Regina Learning Disabilities and they did a thorough assessment with a psychologist. Um, and then I was diagnosed with combined ADHD. So I'm hyperactive and inattentive. Um, and I do have general and social anxiety, but that experience was really good. The psychologist was really thorough. She was really understanding. Um, she explained to me that my anxiety symptoms were likely caused by the untreated ADHD. Um, I was just trying so hard to overcompensate for those things that I struggled with, um, that I had developed anxiety. And, and she was confident that if I treated that anxiety or the ADHD and got on top of that, then those anxiety symptoms would likely go away. My family doctor, it was a difficult thing. Like I had to go and take the assessment to my family doctor um, and have her kind of review it. And I'll be honest and say that I don't think that she really believed the diagnosis. Um, she was hesitant to treat the ADHD. She really wanted to treat the anxiety um, and put me on like an anxiety medication or a depression medication. Um, and it took a little bit of pushing to say that I really wanted to try that ADHD medication first and see what it did. Um, so she came around and, and we did that. Um, but I had a side effect to a stimulant um, right off the bat. And so as a precaution, um, she kind of pulled me off of it. And, and we went back to that uh, anxiety depression treatment. And so that's kind of where I've been at um, for the last several months. Um, but I actually just met with a psychiatrist yesterday and we're, we're going to go back and revisit the ADHD medication and, and go from there. So it's like facing the medical community. Some of those experiences are really good. Like my experience with the psychiatrist yesterday was amazing. I felt like they understood my symptoms and where they were coming from. And it was really validating. Like she looked at me and she was like, no, I, I feel like you're your anxiety very much is from the ADHD. And she actually went through and gave me like a whole list of reasons of why she thought that. And it was without me having to really articulate um, where those things were coming from. So it was good. So I would say some of my experiences have been good. Some have been not so good, but having the confidence and ability to advocate for yourself, I think is really important or having somebody that can help you do that. When I was in high school, um, I just picked classes that I knew I could excel at. So I didn't take, you know, extra English classes or science classes or anything like that. I took a lot of practical classes. So on paper, like I graduated on honor roll, but if you look at the type of classes you have to take in university, um, they're very different from the classes that I took uh, in high school. And I think that that's how it kind of went under the radar. I think that I've been really, I'm a little bit stubborn when it comes to asking for help. Um, <laughs> so I have found ways to kind of figure things out on my own so that it doesn't impact my work or school as much. Like I don't, I don't feel like it does. Um, 
before and then during my diagnosis, like I, I work a desk job. Um, so I'm in an office, but it is very regimented. Um, like we've got schedule breaks and I need to be accountable to somebody else for the entirety of my day. Uh, and that works really well for me. If I, um, I think if I just had free range to like plan out my day or only had to get a few things done, I might flounder a little bit, um, but it's generally pretty fast paced. And so that keeps me engaged throughout the day. Um, and then in terms of school, it, I mean, it's been interesting because we had the pandemic hit kind of the same time that all of this was going on. Um, so there was a change in a lot of routines and structure that I had had before the pandemic. So that also added a little extra layer of complication, I think. Um, I had to re-find those things or rediscover those things or, or find ways that um, I could function in a different environment. Um, but I also took a leave from work for four months at the beginning of the pandemic, which allowed me to kind of reset a little bit. And I think was, it was necessary. I think that a lot of work needs to be done in respect to both of those environments. Um, I, and I don't think that making those changes would be negative. Like, I think it would help everyone, whether you have ADHD or anxiety or depression, or whether you're completely healthy mental, uh, mental health wise. I think that um, a lot of things are structured and there's obstacles. Like I've had a couple of syllabuses in university that are extremely difficult to read. Um, they're not laid out in a fashion, like my eyes just jump all over the page and whatnot. Um, and I don't think changing things like that would hurt anyone else. If anything, I think that it would just make it easier for everyone. So it would be nice to see things like that, um, just more commonplace, but also I feel like there's still a stigma attached with ADHD, especially as an adult. Um, so I know that I've had struggles with kind of like coming forward and saying, hey, maybe I need some help here. Like I, I still struggle personally with thinking that it's more of like a personal flaw or something that I could just work harder at when I know the reality is that I do work very hard um, to stay on task and get everything done that I need to do. And those extra accommodations would just be helpful regardless, right? But it's hard to come forward and ask for them. So I think that if we talk about it more in the workplace, um, it, it will make a difference. They definitely have changed and I've also become more aware. Um, like I didn't think that I had time blindness or that I was clumsy. Um, but then the more I think about it, like my family notoriously thinks that I'm late for things and I, ne I never think that I am. Um, and their nickname for me is crash. <laughs> but I, I don't, and I think that those things come from that ADHD. Um, they've changed over the years, like those symptoms as the environments change. Um, but then we also adapt differently as we get older too. But I would say as a kid, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of the ways that I struggled. I think I was just kind of um, really naive into where those, those things happened. And I just kind of went about my day and it was just a part of, I don't know, checking things like 500 times um, to make sure that I had my keys and whatnot. I just thought that was normal. I didn't realize that not everybody did that. And as I get older, I'm aware that not everybody else does. Um, and the same thing with school too, like writing papers and studying for university. Um, I know that I put a lot of time into reading in particular, like textbooks are quite difficult for me to read. Um, and my experience is definitely different than somebody who doesn't have ADHD and they can just like fly through a chapter and you know, 20 minutes and I'm there like two hours in still like highlighting to try to keep myself on task, you know, but I'm aware of that now that not everybody has that experience. Since my diagnosis, it's been really like not being medicated for the ADHD or treated for the medication or treated for the ADHD. Um, I'm constantly like doing a lot of reflection and just as like certain things will happen, I'll be having a conversation with someone and I realize a few minutes in that I, I have no idea what they've said or what they're talking about. Like they'll ask me a question, um, but I'm aware now that that's from the ADHD. So it draws more attention to those things as they happen, um, not necessarily before they happen. So I can't avoid them all, um, but I, I see them as they happen or after they happen. 
I think it's a tool. Um, not being treated has allowed me to kind of play with different aspects of my life first. Um, so I'm really aware that I need to stay hydrated. I need to watch my diet and I need to exercise and those things all help. They're one part of that puzzle. And I think that medication is the same. Like you still have to have, or I still have to have, um, my calendar with the post-it notes that I can see and visualize to keep me where I need to be. But that medication is definitely also key into that mental health aspect of it for sure. I think there's regret in that I can see a lot of the struggles that I had that were maybe avoidable. Um, struggling with anxiety was probably avoidable, at least to a large extent. Um, and all of the, like the time that goes into just managing certain things that maybe wasn't necessary. Um, there's definitely that regret, but then also it is, it's validating to have a medication that you can take and it helps um, in knowing that this isn't something like, I think sometimes I convince myself even still that I could just work harder or, um, try harder and do particular things. But then when you can take that medication and you really do realize that it is a medical condition, um, that needs to be treated, there's reassurance in that for sure. So the ADHD, I think helps me honestly, in a lot of ways, um, the ability to bounce from activity to activity, like having so many different things on the go plays really well into that ADHD and that I can sit down and write a paper for, you know, 30 minutes, if that's all I can give. And then I can go hang out with my kids for 30 minutes and be really engaged with them. And then I can take a break from that and, and go do something else on the to-do list. So I'm productive all day long. I don't know that if it, like, it's not necessarily the healthiest thing. Um, but the ADHD I definitely helps in getting everything done and being able to bounce from task to task without losing too much time, so to speak. When they were little, the structure of their days helped me quite a bit. Like I knew we had nap time at 10 and two and we had lunch time at 12 and all of those things helped me kind of stay on task and, and engaged. So as they get older and they don't need those things, um, I find there has been a little bit of a struggle there and that I'm now like relying on myself to, to be where I need to be and all of those things. Like it's not that external um, influence that's kind of guiding my day anymore. Um, they know that I take medication. They know that I see a doctor and a counselor. I think it's really important. Like if anything, I want them to feel comfortable speaking up if they feel like they're struggling, because I feel like when I was younger, a lot of the struggles that I had, um, I kept them internalized and I, I didn't, I didn't let my parents know, um, how crummy I felt a lot of the time or how overwhelmed I felt with things. And I, I just, if anything, don't want my kids to have that. I want them to know that like, we can talk about those things, whether we need to do something about them or just have a conversation, or if they just need a hug, uh, I'm here for that. Uh, and I, I just encourage it more than anything. And I think by sharing my experience that hopefully helps them feel more comfortable sharing theirs. I think that there's a lot of misconception. It's starting to change, but it's definitely still there with the female versus male perspective of ADHD. Um, the experience is, it's just different um, for each gender. And that was a lot of the conversation I had with my psychiatrist um, just yesterday, actually, uh, in terms of how women um, internalize a lot of their struggles and they use like social pressure um, just to, to manage their symptoms, which isn't healthy, but it, it presents differently. And I don't think that that's talked about nearly enough. Um, we kind of have still this image of what ADHD looks like in childhood. And I, it's typically from a male perspective because that's what we've kind of seen and that's what we're aware of. Um, but there's not really a lot talked about beyond that, I don't think, um, in terms of what it looks like in adults, male or female, and what those struggles are. Um, I think that we could use a lot of education and, and just awareness in that respect. I think it benefits me a lot. Like, it's interesting when you think about something that has all of these challenges, but then really when you look at all of the other things that I know that I, I couldn't do or wouldn't be doing, 
if I didn't have ADHD. Um, I currently started playing the guitar. I bought a guitar like two weeks ago. Um, but just like those random things that you decide, I convinced myself I can do a lot of things, which I don't necessarily think that I would do um, if I didn't have ADHD. Like I'm always picking up a new hobby or trying something new or have a different interest in something. And I think that that curiosity and, and uh, energy that goes into those things is really beneficial. Like, I think that it helps me at work. It helps me with my photography. It helps me as a parent. Um, it helps me you, like with the kids, just letting them know that it's okay to like try new things. And if you don't like it six months from now, that's totally okay. Uh, but you can try things and you can fail at them. And, and that's, that's fine. And the multitasking, I don't think that I would be as great of a multitasker if it wasn't for the ADHD. They say that you can't multitask, but I feel like I very much, <laughs> very much do. <laughs> Part of the thing that happens with an ADHD diagnosis is we look at all of the ways that our life isn't working because of the ADHD, um, where even if you look at a kid, if they have that ADHD diagnosis, like let's take the things that they're really good at and utilize those so that they maybe don't struggle as much with their homework or they don't struggle as much in a social environment or they don't struggle as much in an environment where they maybe have to sit still because they think that there's a lot of ways that we can adapt. Not that we necessarily should have to adapt, um, but we can. And I, I think that it just makes us feel better about ourselves if we can look at all of those positives while still recognizing those things where we struggle. Um, but really focus on the positives and see how we can make those work in all aspects of our lives. It's something that we do need to talk about more and from a variety of perspectives. I think the yeah. more perspectives that we can have, the better.